In this video, I'll be giving you my thoughts on Freewell's new K2 Magnetic Filter Kit. Hi everyone, and welcome back to my channel. A while back I was asked to review Freewell's uh, Versatile Magnetic VND kit, and it was an interesting filter system that had quite good quality, and was a useful addition for anyone, you know, not looking to use, say, uh, square filters or graduated filters or anything like that. And recently Freewell reached out again and asked if I would be interested in testing their new K2 filter system. Now, this system has, you know, very similar functionality to that previous one, but it combines it with a square filter slot that can be used uh, to add in, you know, a graduated filter or some of the other special effects filters that the company offers. Now, it also makes use of um, base rings for mounting and removing from the lens, which is a little bit easier than sort of taking the entire unit off every time. Now, of course, being a variable ND filter system, this is sort of primarily aimed at sort of run and gun video work, um, but since they did ask a photographer to review it, I'll be looking at it from that perspective. And there's some good, there's some bad, and also a few suggestions that I have uh, for Freewell to make this a little bit more useful for photographers as well. If you're not familiar with Freewell's first filter kit, here's how this one works. Essentially you take one of these uh, mounting rings, which Freewell provides quite a few of in the box, and you screw it into the lens. And then once you've got that in, you can actually mount the main uh, filter unit to that ring. As you can see here, there are a couple of clips and some small thumb screws on the side of the main unit. Now in order to mount it, you need to uh, press the two clips in and place it onto the mounting ring. And once it's on, you can then secure it with the two thumb screws to make sure that it won't get knocked off. And it also stops the unit from rotating when you turn the VND filters. Once it's mounted to the lens, you can choose whether you want to use the polarizer filters or the VND filters. So let's start with the VND component. To use the VND functionality, you first drop in this VND base filter, which attaches itself via magnets, and then you can choose the strength of the VND that you'd like to use. Now, the kit comes with a 1 to 5 stop filter and a 6 to 9 stop filter. And again, you can attach them magnetically over the top of the base ring, and then turn it until you hear it click into place. And that ensures that not only is it securely on the unit, but that you have hard stops at each end of the range. It's also a great little piece of design because because it means that you immediately know if you have the filter mounted correctly, even without looking at it. So if it continues to spin freely, you've got it on in reverse. Reversing either of these filters and mounting it backwards is actually how you access the polarizing functionality. Just remember to take out the VND base filter uh, when you do this or things do get a little bit funky. The 1 to 5 stop filter reverses and becomes a regular uh, CPL, and the 6 to 9 stop filter reverses to become a CPL with a built-in ND32 for a little bit of extra light reduction. Now this is all functionality that was in the previous kit, but the ergonomics have been upgraded a little bit and the quality feels a little bit better as well. Now the big difference with this unit though is that you can open up these two flaps on the back of the unit and place a single rectangular filter down behind your other filters. Now the filters that I was provided with for this test are a three stop reverse grad, a half strength snow mist and a gold streak. Installing these is as simple as opening the holder and sliding the filter in the back like so. Now, the filters also have a nice little aluminium frame around them to make sure that they don't get scratched around the edges, and they have a nice little tab at the top to make it really easy to get in and out, especially when you have cold fingers. The main unit also comes with a magnetic protector for the front and a press-in protector for the rear. Now, these are both really well designed and easy to get on and off, um, very, very secure. But I found that the rear one was actually quite a little bit more difficult to take out when you have cold hands. And I've been testing this in winter, so cold hands was kind of par for the course. So I've actually found myself taking this out before I leave home and just sliding this into the case so that I know I'm ready to uh, you know, work when I get there and just dusting off the filters if needed. I did the majority of my testing with these filters on the Fujifilm GFX100S with a combination of the GF 20 to 35 mm f4 and the 45 to 100 mm f4. And you know, basically by using these really great lenses, I wanted to see if the filters reduced the quality 
uh, of the lenses any and I'm happy to say that I didn't notice a change in detail with or without the filters so that's definitely a good start. Now if you happen to see my first look at the GF 20 to 35 millimeter f4 lens and notice that there were a lot of sort of long exposure landscapes in there this was why. I was testing the K K2 kit at every moment I had on that trip and that meant that a lot of time on the coast uh, with some moving water which is you know pretty much just the way I like it. When I arrived on Jeju Island I was greeted by an overcast sky and an absolutely fierce wind which given that it was the middle of the day uh, gave me another opportunity to begin shooting right away so I quickly drove over to uh, Yongduam, the Dragon's Head Rock to make use of that sort of flat light and the, the raging tides that were being brought in by the wind and firstly I just wanted to see what you might uh, be able to get with these VNDs uh, by themselves during the day. So I stepped through each of the stops to get a feel what uh, could be achieved in, in sort of overcast light. Now this is one of the major benefits of VND filters for photographers. You know, you can quickly and easily see the effect of different shutter speeds on your image and at the nine stop setting I was able to get around a 25 second exposure at f16 uh, with this overcast sky. So there's definitely plenty of light blocking power in there if you want to get out and do some landscapes with this kit. For the couple of sunrise shoots that I had planned I really wanted to test the reverse grad but unfortunately we didn't get a lot of action in the sky so I mostly made use of it as sort of a regular three stop graduated ND um, by using it just to darken the top areas of my image. Now it definitely gets the job done as you can see um, but for photography purposes I'd really like to see some softer edge maybe slightly weaker graduated NDs. The transition here is just a little bit hard uh, for the way that I like to work so that's not a slight against the filter just something that I hope that uh, Freewell could add to the kit in the future. One thing I noticed quite acutely with these sunrise shoots though was how difficult the whole system was to operate with really cold hands. So getting enough purchase on the magnetic filters to pull them away safely uh, with cold and dry hands is really difficult um, but getting that VND base ring out having to get your finger in there and pull that out was nigh on impossible. I felt like I was going to break it every time. So the magnets are strong and that's definitely a good thing uh, but in harsher conditions it can be a little bit difficult to work with. So if you'll be using them in, in cold conditions definitely maybe consider consider uh, getting some of those gloves with the peel back fingers or maybe even uh, something like a uh, microfiber towel with the grip pads on one side and maybe that's something that Freewell could even include with the kit in the future is just sort of a, a microfiber towel with the grip so that you can get these things on and off really easily and safely. Another thing that I did notice while I was out in the field and subsequently sort of tested very specifically for was that the final stops of each of the VNDs, so uh, the fifth stop and the ninth stop, had a slightly different color to the other stops. And to be clear, I mean, differing color across VNDs is just sort of part and parcel of the way that a, a VND works. Uh, and Freewell have done a very, very good job at keeping things quite neutral um, at all of the other stops. And they've even printed the words true color on the filters themselves. But the five stop and the nine stop setting are they swing far enough that you can sort of notice it if you see them next to each other. Now not really an issue as you can sort of edit it out but if you are doing perhaps something like uh, a set of images at different shutter speeds or maybe you're doing a little bit of video work this could become something that you need to consider and it might affect your workflow somewhat. The next thing I noticed was in this shot later in the day uh, where I had a big swatch of blue sky in my frame. Now as far as I'm aware all VND filters are is essentially a pair of opposing uh, polarizing filters that rotate against each other and again I'm sure somebody with more technical knowledge would be able to correct me in the comments and let us know exactly how they work but basically the result of this means that there can be sort of adverse effects when you're showing large portions of sky at certain angles and specifically with wide angle lenses. Now it happens with all VND filters and at the extreme ends of them and some of the cheap ones will actually show a complete X pattern across the entire frame sort of a darkening uh, in the shape of an X when used at their extremes. Now on this set that isn't nearly as pronounced as other VNDs that I've used in the past but it was noticeable when I was experimenting with the shutter speeds in this frame. So looking at this image you might not immediately notice that there's anything amiss but if I flick back between this and the next frame which was shot with one additional uh, stop of ND you begin to see the issue. So images next to each other might become uh, noticeable a little bit. Now again this is something that happens with all VNDs, it's not unique to this one and it's definitely not very strong in this one but it's definitely something you need to be aware of uh, if you're planning to use filters in that way. 
Something I did run into in the field that I would really like to have been able to do was to combine uh, neutral density filters with polarization. It's something that I do quite a lot. You know, when there are things like shiny rocks in my frame or, you know, leaves with water on them and things like that. Now, for example, in a case where I might want to combine sort of a full polarization of some shiny surfaces with 10 stops of ND, uh, this kit in its current state really can't do that. Now, a possible solution here would be for Freewell to offer some regular square ND filters in the future that could just be slotted in behind the polarizing filter. So you could quickly do your polarization, then slot in a really strong ND filter and you'd be able to uh, create some more landscape images that you know photographers might want to create as well. At this stage you only have the regular polarizing filter and the polarizer with the uh, ND32 in it which may or may not be strong enough for the the scene that you're working in. The two special effects filters that I was provided as part of this kit were the gold streak and the snow mist filters. Now honestly these are probably more useful for uh, video work but I'll demonstrate them here and so you can sort of get an idea of how they do actually affect the image. And basically both are ways of augmenting bright lights in your frame and giving you a special effect based on those. The gold streak filter has several stripes down it that turn pin lights into streaks across your frame, much like you might see from something like an anamorphic lens. Now, I can see it being quite useful in cinematic scenes like maybe a lone car driving down a dark road at night or, you know, something like that. But being in a city like Seoul, where there are literally hundreds if not thousands of pin lights in your view at any given time, things can get really messy really quickly. So you definitely need to be careful with when and where you use this filter. I did manage a few images that might work though, so please do stick around for the slideshow at the end of the video. While the filter is mounted, you can actually unlock the two uh, locking screws on the side of the main unit and rotate the filter to get an idea of, you know, what angle might work best in your scene. Now, interestingly, uh, lights hitting the filter from the sides also tend to create streaks as well, so that could be something you could use to your advantage by having lights outside of the frame and just sort of having the special effect of having uh, stripes come across your frame as well. The only thing to really be careful of with this filter though is having uh, bokeh balls in your frame because things can get a little bit funky with the streaks blocking the light. As for the mist filter, I think we've all seen one of these in action by this point. They essentially soften up your image a little, um, especially around high contrast edges. So they can give a sort of smoother appearance to skin and soften up the harsh edge of, uh, of lights in your frame. Overall, this is probably the best quality and most well thought out VND kit that I've had the chance to work with so far. And having the ability to uh, slot rectangular filters in offers a whole lot more functionality that a lot of other kits don't have. And the few issues that I did mention um, from a usability standpoint could probably be fixed quite easily uh, with more releases from Freewell in the future. So if you do end up wanting to invest in this kit or learn a little bit more about it, I do have a link down below and that is an affiliate link that helps out the channel, uh, but no additional cost to you. Now, even if you don't, thanks a lot for watching and I hope that you enjoy the slideshow. We'll uh, see you in the next video.